It's that time of year again, where EA are teasing the launch of FIFA 21 and fans all over the world prepare for another year of frustration, sweaty goals, overpowered players, too much FIFA points, endless SBCs and unskipped replays. Not like it will stop anyone buying it though, but FIFA 21 is coming out in a few weeks and EA have released the top 18 ratings for Chelsea as well as a few other clubs and it's... Oh, it, I'm not going to lie, it's dreadful man. I'll give them some credit, they haven't done too bad on some of the ratings. Some of the other ratings are making me seriously question their ball knowledge. In this video, we're going to take a deep look at each of the ratings given in this video from best to worst. And we're going to see if they can justify their ratings or if EA have just been EA again. But before I start this video, I just want to say guys, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. If you haven't done so already, press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any content on this channel. And yeah, let's get straight into the video. Kante, 88. Now, Angolo Kante's only taken a minus one drop from last season, and on the grand scheme of things, it is fair. He struggled for minutes last season due to injuries and also struggled to break into the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot. And because of that, he wasn't able to have as many game time as usual. He only had 28 appearances for the club last season. And a lot of fans are saying that he dropped in quality. In my opinion, he only dropped based on his expectations and based on how high the stands have been for him last season. He didn't deserve a massive drop, but a minus one isn't anything to fuss about. He's still far and away Chelsea's best player in the game. And even with the new signings, I think it's a fair rating for him, so I'm not going to complain too much. Thiago Silva, 85. Thiago Silva's gone down two from last season and I'll be real I thought two is a bit harsh because I don't think Thiago Silva's qualities have dipped that bad but we know what EA are like with over 30 players let alone 35 plus players and a bit of a decline was to be expected. He's still one of the best centre backs in the world, his defensive stats are still good and he at least has a rating that justifies being one of those best centre backs as well. I'm not as annoyed at this one, I don't think it's a fair rating, I still think 86 would have been better for him, but there are way worse ratings than this one. Timo Werner, 85. Now this one, this one, this is some budge. Somehow Werner's got a downgrade of minus one this season, and I don't know how EA thought they could justify this one. Only Lewandowski was involved in more goals last season than Timo Werner was. He scored 32 goals and 10 assists last season in all competitions, and they thought he deserved a downgrade. It's been the best season of Timo Werner's career and these guys thought he deserved a minus one downgrade. He should be nearer to Kante at 88 if we're being real about it. I can get maybe you don't want to give him too high of a rating because he's moving to a new league and you don't want to put too much pressure on him. But a downgrade literally makes zero sense when he is coming off the best season of his career and EA are smoking AstroTurf if they even thought he should have kept the same rating let alone have a downgrade. The funny thing is, this isn't even the worst rating of the lot. There are some terrible ratings that are yet to come out of this one. There's some decent ones as well, but there's some questionable ones through this. Timo one as though it makes zero sense. This guy should be around the 86, around an 87. The guy had the second most co combined goals in last season, and the guy is only stuck on an 88. It doesn't make sense to me. Kai Havertz, 85. Now Kai Havertz got an upgrade from last season, he was just an 84 then. He's got a plus one from last season and the shooting's gone up by plus three. So all in all, it doesn't look too bad of a card. My only issue with this is the downgrading is physical because in my opinion it's a very underrated aspect of his game and that's why he can, pro he can progress the ball with such power and hold the ball up well in the centre forward position. But overall, it's not a bad card. I hope the physical doesn't have too much of an impact on him in-game, but it's not the worst card, and I think it's fair for him. Hakim Ziyech, 85. No change to his card from last season. He was Ajax's top player of the season last season for the third year in a row, and without a doubt, he was the best player outside the top five leagues in his time at Ajax. He's got a plus one rating for his shooting and his passing, but other than that, nothing else has really changed. He'll still be a great card to use in the centre of midfield, or cutting in from right wing as well. But yeah, not too many complaints on this card either. It's a decent card at 85. Azpilicueta, 84. Now, this is another card that hasn't really changed rating. Azpi had a slow start to the season last season, but he kept improving. And by the end of the season, he was one of our most consistent defenders. And his leadership came up trumps for us on so many occasions. His pace took a little bit of a hit with a minus three, but it's an understandable drop. He's lost pace, and that is one of his deficiencies in this game. Azpilicueta is one of those defenders that you know what he can do well. He's a brilliant one-on-one -on -one defender, but he's just a little bit too slow than you want him to be, or a little bit not tall enough than you want him to be. So I 
expect him to lose pace in the game as a result. I think he's lost some of his pace from when he played centre-back back in the Conte days. His dribbling and defending took a little bit of a drop though. It took a minus one. I don't know why, because he got a lot better going forward post-lockdown. And in my opinion, he's still very reliable defensively. But it's, not, it's just something little. It's nothing too deep about it. I think an 84 is a fair rating for him. The drop in pace is fair. And yeah, it's a decent card overall. It's a fair card. Jorginho, 83. Now he got a plus one upgrade on his shooting and a plus two in defending. Physicals and also decent 73, which is higher than I thought. I'm not going to lie, Jorginho had a great start to the season, but he just really seemed to drop off post-lockdown. He was becoming a lot less favoured by Frank Lampard. And his dribbling's taken a downgrade this season, but I'm not going to complain too much about this one. If I'm being really real about it, I thought Jorginho would have got a downgrade. He's kept the same rating and he's gone up a little bit more than I thought he would be, to be honest. So I'm really not going to com complain too much about this one. Kovacic, 83. Now, I'm going to complain a lot about this one. Kovacic has been disrespected so much this season compared to other midfielders. He only got a plus one rating, but realistically, this guy should be at 84 and 85. His dribbling got a plus one to 87, but the overall card is a joke. I mean, this guy was literally Chelsea player of the season last season, and he isn't even in our top five best players now in the game. It doesn't make sense to me, and this guy just comes across as so underrated. People just ignore him because he doesn't pop up too much on the goals or the assist tally, but he's such a quality player, and I think an 83, you put him at the same rating as Jorginho, who in my opinion has had a poor season by his standards, it's a disrespect, and I think EA must have taken a wild guess with this card because this one makes absolutely no sense to me. How is he a player of the season for this club and he's not even top five? Don't make sense. Christian Pulisic, 81. Here we go, man. Like, like when I talk about BS cards, this guy didn't even get a rare gold. Like, what is this? Steven Bergwijn is 83 rated and has a rare card. And you're going to tell me Christian Pulisic deserves an 81, not even rare gold card. The guy's got a plus two, but seriously, who cares? Pulisic is another one who was one of our best players last season. Was a game changer post lockdown and was so brilliant for us. Looked like the hazard of old, but just with a bit more end product. And Fever think he's worse than the likes of Pepe and Bergwijn. His shooting is only one higher than Mateo Kovacic. And Kovacic has scored five goals since 15 16. Christian Pulisic scored nine goals last season. You just know with this sort of card, he's going to have about five or six informs or about 10 SBCs on him just to try and rinse our cash a little bit more. It's a dead rating for Christian Pulisic. Marcus Alonso, 81. Now, I imagine Marcus Alonso has the same rating as Christian Pulisic in this game. And they're trying to tell you that they both had the same impact for the team from last season. Seriously, it don't make sense. And I'll give Marcus Alonso credit. He's had a better season than 1819, but he's taken a minus one downgrade in nearly everything except passing from his FIFA 20 card. And we also have to be realistic and say he's not even our first choice left back anymore. He's got the same rating as Ben Chilwell as well, which I don't really understand too much, but I'm going to get into that later on as well. I doubt he gets used much anyway because you know how much pace is used in this game. We'll only see Marcus Alonso if he gets a few informs, but same rating as Pulisic. Rather, it don't make sense, man. It really doesn't. Ben Chilwell, 81. Now, Chilwell got the same rating as Alonso, and even though I think he's better than Alonso, I, I think it's a bit more of a fair rating for him. He didn't have the best season at Leicester City, and his form did take a little bit of a dip due to the interest from Chelsea, so I kind of get why he hasn't been upgraded too much. He got a plus one upgrade on his card anyway, so I'm, I'm not going to complain too much about this one. Could have been a rare gold card. I don't think Alonso should have been a rare gold compared to Ben Chilwell, but Christian Pulisic isn't worth one apparently, so I don't even know what qualifies anyone for it. Antonio Rudiger, 81, and Kurt Zuma, 80. Rudiger got, got a minus one and dropped to a non-rare card, but it's still higher than Kurt Zuma, which is a real surprise to me. Kurt Zuma didn't get an upgrade from last season, but in my opinion, he's, got, he's grown to become a much better defender than Rudiger has. Rudiger, we relied on him a lot to try and bring experience to the back line, and he didn't really show it, and I think he went down in Frank Lampard's estimation. Kurt Zuma, again, he's not the finished product, but he looked the best defender out of a bad bunch last season in terms of our centre-backs. He was one of our most reliable defenders post-lockdown, and to be honest, deserves an 81 or an 82. Mason Mount, 80. He has a plus five from last season and he was one of our most important midfielders towards the end of the season. 
I think an 81 or an 82 would have been fair for him because he was very important to our midfield. Lampard and so many puns have spoken about how much our press relies on him, how good he is going forward and his movement on and off the ball. But I'm not going to complain too much on this one either. P plus 5 is a massive upgrade from his previous card. And you know it's not going to be the end of that for him either. So I, I don't think it's too, it's nothing too deep to complain about. Olivier Giroud, 79. This is another example that FIFA absolutely do not care about players once they reach 30. Olivier Giroud is one of our most influential players of last season post-lockdown. And he gets a minus 3 downgrade. How can you justify having Giroud have such a drop? Yes, he's on the wrong age of 30. But anyone who knows ball that knows that Olivier Giroud's style of play doesn't deteriorate with age. He relies on strength. He relies on finding other players around him and getting the best out of the players around him. He's possibly one of the most underrated players of the last decade. Only because he's slow and even for slow FIFA took the piss with 34 pace just watch his last goal of the season against Wolves and tell me he can't make a run or tell me he hasn't got any physical because they gave him a downgrade in that they gave him a minus two which is just another example that this game is finished the guy got seven goals in nine games they took down his finishing as well he's got the same rating as Andreas Christensen who couldn't stamp down the first team place they thought that justified a minus three downgrade shooting as, as well when he scored seven goals in nine games for us it's a joke man it's a joke this entire rating is an absolute joke Barkley and Ruben 78 both of them take downgrades it's understandable Barkley just kept falling down the pecking order throughout last season and Ruben Loftus-Cheek didn't didn't have enough time to really stamp an impact when he came back from injury it's very interesting to see how Ruben turns up for next season but it makes sense that both of them take the downgrades now, one of the most interesting things in this as well is that this is the top 18 and we haven't seen Kepa or Tammy Abraham. Kepa, I think it's a big statement from FIFA to drop him so low, but I kind of get it because his form last season was just ridiculously bad. Tammy Abraham, though, if he's got under 78, that's a huge disrespect because the guy came in with so much pressure on his shoulders and he got 18 goals for us in his first season at Chelsea as a starting player as well nah I don't respect that I think Tammy Abraham personally he should have had an 80 minimum I get that his form from February just dropped and he wasn't the same player as he was from the opening first months of the season but to say he deserves less than a 78 just isn't fair and I think that's a load of bullshit from my eyes but guys this is the end of the video for today let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of the comments I've made down in the comment section below how BS are these FIFA ratings or do you guys actually agree of them let me know down in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to carefree lewis g let me know if you guys want to see more content like this and i'll see you guys tomorrow premier league's about to kick off up the shelves